The next step is the services layer, which implements the relatively simple business layer of this application. We'll start with the user service class. It's the main class in this package and handles pretty much the entire business logic of the app. It's a service bean. This means it handles generic business logic for the application. We need access to the repositories we just defined for users, groups, and messages. The API keys service is the exact one I used in Facebook with the exception of a different properties file name. I'll discuss that later. It generally abstracts API keys and separates them from the source code. The password encoder is used to encrypt and verify the token. Media repository and notification service are identical to the stuff we had in the Facebook clone app. This method sends an SMS message via the Twilio web service. If you recall, we added the Twilio SDK into the POM file in the first lesson. This SDK makes sending an SMS message very easy as you can see from the code. The login API lets us validate a user and get the current data uh, the server has for that user. Since there is no username slash password, we need to use the token to authenticate. First, we need to find the user with the given phone. Assuming the user isn't there, we'll throw an exception. Since the auth is hashed, as we discussed before, we need to test the incoming auth via the matches method in encoder. It verifies the hash matches the auth token. This method creates a string of the given length, which includes a random number for verification. Signup creates an entry for a specific user, but doesn't activate the account until it's verified. We first check if the phone number is already registered. If so, we need to fail. Otherwise, we create the new user and initialize the value of the data and the verification code. Finally, we send the activation code and return the user entity. The verify method activates a user account. If the verification mode is correct, we mark the user as verified and return true. We use set props both from the signup and update methods. There isn't much here, but if we add additional metadata, this might become a bigger method like it is in the Facebook clone. Update verifies the user's token, then updates the properties. There isn't much here. These aren't used at the moment, but they are pretty much identical to what we have in the Facebook clone and should be easy to integrate in a similar way. This is part of the work to integrate support for the user typing feature. Right now, the client app doesn't send or render this event, but it should be relatively simple to add. When a user starts typing to a conversation, we can invoke this method. To user can be a user or a group. Is the user present? It's If the user is present, it's a user. I'll discuss the event code in the sockets when we reach the app socket class. And this, if this is a group, we need to send the event to all the users within the group via the socket connection. This method sends a message to its destination, which can be a user or a group. In order to send a message, we first need to create a chat entity, a message entity, so we can persist the message in case delivery failed. This is the same co code we saw in the typing event. If the message is destined to a user, the following block will occur. Otherwise, we'll go to the else block where the exact same code will execute in a loop over the members of the group. We mark the destination of the message and convert it to, JSON, to a JSON string we invoke the send message API. 
the send message uses the socket to send the message to the device. If this failed and the device isn't reachable, we should send this message as text using push notification. This method is identical to the other send message method, but it uses a JSON string, which is more convenient when a message comes in through the WebSocket. The previous version is the one used when this is invoked from the web service, which is what we use. And this one works when a message is sent via the WebSocket. This method converts a chat message entity to JSON so we can send it to the client. Object Mapper can convert a Pojo object to the equivalent JSON string. This method sends JSON via the socket to the group or a user. It allows us to propagate a message onward. It works pretty much like the other methods in this class that send to a group or a user. This method finds the user matching the given phone number. This method is used by find registered user and find registered user by ID. It generalizes the translation of a user list to a single user DAO value. It implicitly fails for unverified users as well. ACK allows us to acknowledge that a message was received. It just toggles the ACK flag. When a user connects via WebSocket, this method is invoked. It finds all the messages that weren't ACKed by the user and sends them to that user. That way, if a device lost connection, it will get the content once it, it's back online. This method is invoked on launch to update the push key in the server so we can send push messages to the device. With that, user service is finished.